This video shows some different methods, a variety of monotype methods. It will also show the development of a dry point plate and then a variety of ways to work uh, in a monoprinting method with the dry point. All of these are going to be done on a plexiglass plate. Before you send that through the press or work on it, you're going to need to bevel it. And so you'll use your scraper and you'll take the scraper and scrape down a bevel of 45 degrees with long and smooth strokes um, a lot slower than what I'm showing right here on the, on the plexiglass. It comes off fairly easily on the plexiglass. Make sure you go all the way down to the bottom of the plate as you're working on this and that you only peel back on each side that you're working on. Right here, I'm going to show you that because of the movement of your wrist, you tend to not uh, get the corners done very well. They don't go in quite as far as what the kind of the center section of the plate is when you're beveling it. So you have to spend some extra time in those areas to make sure that the bevel line is the same depth and width all the way across the plate. So only peel back that film on the top as you're working on each side. Uh, don't pull it back any further because you're actually protecting the plate from any kind of uh, accidental gouging of it. Um, it's also not just the tool. I'm showing you there that my finger got cut, not with the tool, but with the corner of the plate. It can be pretty uh, sharp, so be careful with that. You will need to work with dampened paper in all of these methods, and so you'll spray down one side of the paper, stack it, and uh, place that in a bag for at least uh, a half hour so that it's wet for you to use. We're first going to work with some monotypes. Now you could just cover your whole plate in one color. In fact, that's probably the easiest way to use your brayer and just cover the whole plate with either black or um, here I'm using brown, but I decided to segment out the image a little bit. You could see that the drawing that I'm working from is underneath there. I can actually still see it while I'm working. It's hard to see it in the video, but uh, I'm getting pretty close to where the areas are of where the figure was on this. And uh, so I'm doing it in both black and brown because I wanted a little variation in this particular style. This is the drawing method and you'll see that I have a piece of cardboard down that is taped to show where the plate is actually going to go. Now I'm taking that drawing and making sure that it is in the same spot taped to the piece of paper where the plate will be and then I make a little hinge on there so I can go back on top of it. You will notice that I'm using number one a red pen here I'm using my finger and I'm going over areas that I can see in the photograph which you can see a little bit of to the left. Then uh, the red allows me to know where I've been. You could use a pencil or you could use different colored pens to do this. I'm pushing harder in some areas, softer in other areas. and. Uh, I'm using a wet paper. You could use a dry paper on this. It comes out slightly differently if you do it that way, but um, what is happening and why I'm not drawing right on the back of the sheet, although some people do it that way, is I'm transferring the image onto the paper in a drawn line. It'll be kind of a fuzzy line that's kind of like a pencil line. Um, and I'm going to ask you to do additions of five of your mono prints or monotypes. There you can see the how it comes out. Um, it was pretty light. I probably should have pressed harder. You have to be careful that you don't accidentally rest your hand in areas or that will come off on the paper as well. Now what I could do right at that point, what I often do, is take the plate over to the press, put a piece of paper on it, and run it through the press. And what ends up happening is you have basically like a photo negative will come off on your piece of paper. Instead, I'm using the plate that has some of those lines taken off of it, but I'm going into it with cotton swabs and wiping out certain areas that I want to get lighter and change kind of texturally. I'm going to then print that instead. So it's kind of a mixture of two methods at the same time. Um, I'm actually gonna print on this one later, but um, you can get, um, quite a bit of the ink off. You can make different textures. You can use a paintbrush. You can do several different things to create this. I'm making sure that I have it pretty much centered on my piece of paper. Stick the newsprint on the top of it, run it through the press, and you'll see what the outcome is from that. 
So these are two slightly different styles. The rest of these I'm going to, you can see some of the white lines are coming through there, but also where I wiped parts of it away and uh, kind of the direction of the cotton swabs on there. Okay, so I'm going back onto the plate here. Again, you can see the drawing underneath there and I'm inking it up in different places. I noticed that my uh, plate was shifting on that piece of paper. So to make sure I keep getting into the exact same spot, I went around and put a, a line, a pencil line around the outside so I could always make sure that it was in the same place again. So here, I would only inked up part of the plate with the brayer and then I wiped parts of it away with a cotton swab and then I'm taking a paintbrush and I'm actually evening the paint, uh, the ink out a little bit more on the plate there. Um, I get a softer effect there. Um, sometimes the cotton swabs cause a little harshness. It's good for getting a lot of ink off but it does have kind of a harsh line to it and you get some little goobers for lack of a, letter, a better term on there. Um, so now I decided I would just paint directly onto the plate. First I start with burnt sienna. The rolled on color was a yellow ochre. I mixed that with some burnt plate oil. You see that over at the side on the left. Um, and I'm mixing that in with these inks. First the brown, the burnt sienna, and now I'm using black to darken in some areas. Of course I'm looking at photograph that I'm working from on this. Um, you cannot paint too um, thickly on the plate because it will kind of ooze out in the printing process. You can see a little bit of texture on the plate here how I filled in painted in both brown and black into the background as I'm finishing that off and then I'm going to take that. You can always lift it up to the light and make sure it's doing exactly what you want and make adjustments. It probably took me a good hour to actually do that painting. This is just like doing a painting on that plate and then it will come out in reverse. The reason that it's a mono type is that you only get one. However, I'm actually sending this through the press three different times and lifting uh, the paper back off. You can see that it gets lighter every time. Those prints are called ghost prints there, and there are two ghost prints here. So you can see there's the darker one gets a little bit lighter and then it gets even lighter. I'm going to print back on top of those later two uh, after this. Uh, I'm going to do that with a dry point. And so here I'm beginning to work on the dry point. I'm using the same image on all of these different plates. Um, here you won't be able to do quite the same thing that you did before um, with this plate because I'm actually scratching lines into the surface of the plate. Um, you can use either your scraper, which I was just using, or an etching needle. You'll notice I'm holding it up to kind of check how the line work is going on there. Um, this can have a variety of effects. You can do very um, just surface scratches which will be very light or you can actually gouge fairly far in there. You're not really engraving and um, that's part of the the technique is that you don't really do an engraved line and you will also get kind of a velvety um, black line or whatever color the ink that you're using uh, with this method because you're not um, really pushing it into the crevices as much as kind of catching it on the, the surface. Okay, so this is an intaglio type of inking. I'm not inking the entire plate because some of it is just blank and it would be a waste of ink to go across the top of that. But I am taking that little card and moving over in different directions to make sure that I get ink into all of the crevices that are in the dry point. Then I take the tarlatan and I'll probably need to wipe it about three different times. Um, you can see some of the images starting to come through there. I, I should have gloves on. I forgot to bring them the day that I was doing this. It's going to get my hands pretty inky. Uh, but to keep your hands clean, it's, it's good to wear a pair of latex gloves. So you can see after I've wiped this down with the tarlatan and I keep moving it around to a cleaner spot on the tarlatan, um, that I have uh, the plate kind of ready to go. I use a piece of newspaper to uh, clean off the rest of it. I also will wipe the back of it off because the back uh, often gets ink on it just in that wiping method. Okay, so there you can see my first state of this particular print. And uh, I decided that I also wanted to see what it looked like in brown. I realized that the burnt sienna ink uh, is a little more transparent than what I typically like uh, for an intaglio 
uh, process like this this dry point is so I left the black right in there uh, it'll make it a little more uh, opaque when I do that um, so then you can see the difference on there you can see some really light lines and some dark areas and how I've cross hatched to get some of that okay we're gonna clean this up in the same way that we clean most of the things that have oil ink by starting with the vegetable oil I use the toothbrush to really get into some of those crevices uh, and pull the ink out then I wipe it with uh, some newspaper or phone book pages and then put uh, some of the isopropyl or rubbing alcohol on there to lift out um, the oil from all those crevices and finish it off with simple green and run that through the sink. I not noticed that there were some areas that I wanted to touch up and darken a little bit. You can't get any lighter, but you can go darker. So remember that as you're working, that you can always make more lines in there, but you can't take them away. So I went back into this and um, darkened some of the main areas, but then I decided that yes, in fact, I did want to do cross hatching throughout all the background. That took me several hours and it was a little painful on my fingers. Uh, by the time that I did all of the scratching in there, I realized that I needed to re-bevel um, the top and bottom of the plate because I got some lines in there uh, that I didn't want to print in the end. Um, I wiped off all the excess of the, the plastic material and then you saw that I actually dampened some of those monotypes that I had done earlier because I'm going to print back on top of them. Right now I'm just inking the dry point uh, the way that I had before but you can see it probably takes a little bit longer because there's a lot more uh, to be inked up on this one. And then I send that through the press and this is state number too uh, with a lot more you can see from fir the first state how much it has changed into the second one with all the darker area in the background it's not completely black back there but it definitely changed it from doing that I actually ink up the the plate again with uh, a brown and I am laying this face down on top of one of those mono prints, the mono types. Um, it was this one, and then you'll see what the change is once it gets the, the dry point on it. This is a difficult process, and you do have to redampen the paper. I did this for several different prints, and you can see how they change on each one of them here, sometimes with black ink, sometimes with brown ink. Um, and it is difficult to get it um, lined up perfectly, um, but that comes with time. You can't just print it with the paper down um, because of the way that the bevel works on there. Um, so these are some variations. Here is the method that you'll probably be using. Those pieces of paper that I threw to the side were actually uh, extra pieces of the drawing that I had done. I made several copies of those. Um, you may want to make several different copies if you're doing the the method where you're drawing on the back but here I had those copies and I used them as stencils so I inked up the plate as a dry point and then I put the stencils on there and I used the brayer to ink over the top of some of those areas so the black and the and the background area actually has a brown back over it then I worked back into that with uh, the cotton swabs as I had before this is harder to control uh, and you may choose to get a separate plate and do like I had done before where you're using two different plates but you can do it all on one plate together and uh, there you can see what the process was for this and this we call a mono print because there was already something scratched into the plate the others are monotypes uh, because there isn't anything else on them